Hi everyone, Janie here and today I'm going to be showing you how to make what is called a five-step stepper card that I learned how to make from Paul Ford here on YouTube. In his video he shows how to make a 5 by 7 version and I'm going to link to that right here on the screen and today I'm going to show you how to make an A2 size version. I also learned about Nitwit collections from Paul Ford and today I'm going to be using a digital collection called Mooey Christmas and also the Mooey Christmas Whatnot collection. You can find links to these below in the description box. I used Publisher to size and print what I was going to need so that I didn't waste a lot of ink or paper printing out full pages. And each of those four and a fourth by five and a half inch papers were enough to cut out all of the layers for one card. But because I'm using more than one color on each card, I printed three, which gives me enough to mix and match and make three cards. You can also use Cricut Design Space to size your digital images and print and cut them, which is what I did with all of the elements I'm going to be using to embellish my cards. And of course, I used colored cardstock for layering my papers on. To make this card, you're going to need a paper trimmer or a ruler and a craft knife, but you can't use a guillotine style paper trimmer or a rotary paper trimmer, and you'll see why in a few minutes and a scoring board will also come in handy as well. Now let's get started. Below in the description box you are going to find all of these measurements and directions or if you go to my blog Crafters Castle which will be linked at the very top of the description box you will find the instructions and this diagram that shows you where to cut and where to score so that you can use this as a guide. And to make this card we're going to be using a piece of cardstock that is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches which is the normal size for making an A2 size card. But because it's really hard for me to read these numbers without getting my head in the way, I'm not actually going to cut this on camera but I am going to use this diagram and I'm going to walk you through each of the steps. You're going to be cutting on the long side of the cardstock and you're going to place it at the one inch mark and then you're going to place your blade at two and a half inches and cut from two and a half to five and seven eighths. Then slide the cardstock to the two inch mark and place the blade at three and three eighths inches and cut from three and three eighths to six and three fourths. Next, slide the cardstock to the three and a half inch mark and again place the blade at three and three eighths inches and cut from three and three eighths inch to six and three fourths inches. Now slide the cardstock to the four and a half inch mark and place the blade at two and a half inches and cut from two and a half inches to five and seven eighths inches. Now it's time to score and your cardstock was going this direction on the trimmer but now you're going to turn it a quarter of a turn to the left when you put it on your scoring board. I like to use a ruler to keep things lined up when doing something like this where it's two separate score lines because if I don't use a ruler I'll end up scoring the second score line in the wrong spot. Okay, the first score line is at the two and a half inch mark and you're going to score from the top edge of your cardstock to the first cut line and then from the last cut line to the bottom edge. At three and three eighths inches, you're going to score between the first and second cut lines and between the third and fourth cut lines. At four and a fourth inches, you score between the second and third cut line. At five and one eighth inch, you score from the top edge to the first cut line and from the last cut line to the bottom edge. At five and seven eighths inches, you score between the first and second cut lines and the third and fourth cut lines. And at six and three fourths inches, you score from the top edge to the second cut line and the third cut line to the bottom edge. Once you've got all the cutting and scoring done, it is time to fold. And so holding your cardstock with the wider part up here, like we did when we were cutting it and scoring it, okay? So we're gonna start with this part and this is the skinnier part. We're gonna start folding on the score lines and we are gonna start with mountain folds.
Okay, so we have folded all of those mountain folds, like so. So it kind of looks like a pyramid coming that direction, as Paul would say. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is valley folds. And we're going to do valley folds all the way across, like so. And, okay, so now it looks like that. So it looks like it can kind of stand up on its own. So now we have to come to the last ones here, and these are mountain folds. And once you get all of those folded, it will close up and look like this. And it's always a good idea to use a good bone folder and go over each of the folds to make sure that they're folded really good and it will stand up just like that. And that's all there is to it, <laughs> except for the decorating part. And I will get to that right now. Okay, these are the papers and the cardstock that I've chose to use. And to save time, I'm not going to go over the dimensions because you can find them below in the description box or on my blog post. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be using my Beacon 3-in-1. You can use whatever adhesive you prefer. And I'm just going to be gluing each of these layers together. And there we go, up close. And once I get everything glued together, I'm going to come back and we're going to start putting them on this card. Okay, I've got all of the layers done, really easy to do, and now it's time to start putting them on the card. And you know, you don't have to do this the way I'm doing it, I mean, in you know, like a color combination. You can do all of the panels the same color you can alternate them in a different way than I'm doing. Um, it's totally up to you. This is, this is awesome. I mean, you can just personalize it any way you want. Okay, there we go. We've got that part done and now it's time to add some decorations to it. And everything I'm using, with the exception of this, is from the um, Knitwit Collection Mooey Christmas. And this one, which goes right along with it, is from the Mooey Christmas Whatnot Kit. And I will have links to those below in the description box. So let me just pull everything over here really quick because I'm not sure what I'm doing. I mean, I am, but I have two different size trees. That's really one of the fun things about digital images is you can make them whatever size you want. For example, this could be made the full size of the front of a card if you wanted. I mean, obviously a square card. Um, I make the trees and the presents, you know, any size I want. I can even change their shape from, you know, from this direction to, you know, from horizontal to vertical, however I want. I love it. Okay, so let's see. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that right there, front and center, and it already says Mooey Christmas on it. Let me see if you could see that. So I actually do not need to add a sentiment. Isn't that just so cute? I love it. He's laying on a candy cane. Actually, I think he might be sledding on a candy cane. And I think I'm going to use some foam tape to do that. 
I like adding a little dimension. This isn't really thick foam tape, but it's thick enough. So, let me see here. Cut a couple pieces, because it's about that wide, so I can do this right down the middle, kind of. Uh, about right there. I'm just guessing. Hopefully I'm guessing correctly. Okay. And that piece came out a little bit longer, but it doesn't really matter. Because no one's going to see it. Okay, let me bring this right over here. Get that centered where I want it. Maybe I want it to go up a little bit now. Okay. I decided. I decided. Maybe. Okay. We're going to call that good. All right. So we've got that on there. And I have some presents here. Wasn't sure which ones I was going to use or if I was going to use all three. Might just use two. I do have a third one here, but it will cover up the Mui Christmas. If I would have put this up higher, I would have had more room. But you know what? It is a done deal. Okay? It's a done deal. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of foam tape for those presents as well. Just cut off a little square here. And I really, really love this Knitwits Collections Mui Christmas because I love cows. I really love cows. It's kind of one of my things. And I was so, so happy when I saw this, this set, this digital set. So, and I like digital sets. I mean, I really don't like you know, printing out a lot of, you know, digital papers. But when it comes to things like this, this is great. And, you know, I did this actually in, you know, Cricut Design Space. So it made it really easy because it printed and cut. And that's what I like. That's probably my favorite feature of Cricut Design Space is print and cut. So there we go with that. Now it's the trees. I had to decide because I want to put some trees right back here. I wasn't sure, I think I want to put them there, but I wasn't sure what size tree, you know? I didn't want it to be too big, but I don't want it to be so small it gets lost. So I'm thinking maybe these bigger ones, and I'm gonna put them in there kind of at an angle. I kind of did that on another card. So I'm gonna put them in there like that. And it doesn't matter that they overlap because when this closes, they're still going to be within the card. So, let me see, should I, do yeah, I can make those dimensional as well. Yeah, because it'll fit right in there. Okay, fine. Let me grab some of this. Ooh, I might need to cut a couple of pieces here. So, we put that on. Ooh, it's almost skinny enough. Let me see something here. I just want to make sure it doesn't show through. Okay, I am going to put it down a little ways. So I'll put it down about right here. And I'm going to have to cut this part off down at the bottom. And you guys are just so wonderfully patient while I do this. I mean, I don't know if it's boring to watch somebody sit here and do all of this stuff. So. What can I talk to you about? Well, let me tell you. I think that, um, you know, I'm doing this as a Christmas card, but just keep in mind that this is a beautiful card fold for all year long, and it has so many wonderful possibilities. So just, you know, just because I'm doing Christmas cards, don't feel that this has to be a Christmas card, and, and try to imagine it you know, another way, you know, how would you decorate it? Make it a masculine card, make it a feminine card, make it a card for a child. There are just so many possibilities. And 
there's so many possibilities on the sides because keep in mind I'm making mine a two size but Paul Ford made his five by seven so I really hope that you visit his channel which is linked below so that you can see how to make this five by seven size because sometimes we like a bigger card right I know I do sometimes okay so we've got the Christmas trees behind there so what do you think so far? That's gonna look really cool standing up. I know that it's hard for you to see standing up in this position, but you know that I will take pictures. And since I put this down here so far, it needs something right up there. And you know what I'm thinking would be perfect for that? I think a bow, just putting a bow there. Bows are like Christmassy. Let me grab a bow. Let's see how this looks. Yep, I think that is the perfect finishing touch. So, let me grab a little glue, and we will get that put on, and we will be done with this card. And then, I will put some pictures up here as the video is ending for you to see. Okay, let me see here. Yep, got to lay it down to do that. Okay, it's going to keep moving around right now because it's wet and I'm going to keep moving it around, but I'm going to take some pictures and you get to see those right now. This is such a fancy card fold with so many possibilities and I know when you watch Paul's video that I have linked below, you will get even more inspiration. I'll also have links to the Knitwit collections that I used today, and don't forget, at the very top of the description box, you're going to find a link to my blog, Crafter's Castle, where you can find the written directions and measurements and diagram for making this card A2 size. I'm also hoping that all of the directions will fit below in the description box, but I haven't tried it yet, so take a look just in case. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I always appreciate you, and I'd love to hear from you, so I hope you leave me a comment. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye-bye.